As a next exercise, let us now find out the center of mass of a hollow hemisphere. A hemisphere which is hollow from inside. So, we understand that the mass of the hemisphere will be only on its surface, there will be no mass inside the volume, right? Only on the surface. So, here we have got a hemisphere of mass m having a radius capital R. We have kept it in such a way so that the center of the base of the hemisphere uh, lies in the um, in the plane such that we can draw an x axis on the base and passing through the center of that we have the y axis like this right. So, the way we have kept it we will try to define the positions of the elements that we shall divide this hemisphere into. Uh, do you understand if we want to find out the shape of the element the small elemental part that we divide this hemisphere into so that we are able to cover the whole hemisphere while we integrate for the x and the y coordinates of center of mass. It will be the best if we divide it into if we cut it horizontally into rings and one such ring that we will get will look like this. This will be a ring which let us say makes uh, an angle theta with the horizontal direction with the x axis. Understand that this distance will also be r, right. Now, just by drawing a line and taking a ring would not help, we have to take some thickness of the ring also, so that we can consider its area and hence we can find out its mass. So, let us say this is a small thickness that the ring has and how do we define this thickness? We define this thickness by saying that let us say the other edge of the ring uh, subtends an angle d theta, small angle d theta at the center. So, that the thickness of the ring itself, this particular thickness comes out to be nothing but r d theta, right. Also, if you just complete this ring, see on the other side this ring will look like this, is not it? Uh, so, if we try to find out various things associated with this ring, for example, what will be the radius of this ring? this radius. See carefully that from this particular right angle triangle that we are obtaining here, we can get the radius of the ring easily. See that if this angle, the lower angle is theta, this angle will also come out to be theta and then we can say that this particular length here will be nothing but r cos theta. So, that becomes the radius of our elemental ring. Whereas, where what is the center of this uh, position of the center of mass of this ring? Understand that this being a ring, full ring, its center of mass itself will lie at its own center, which is at a distance of r sin theta from the origin, from the point O. Right. So, there these are the various things that we can define associated with this ring. This is our elemental ring whose mass also we will have to find out. And in order to find out its mass, what do we need to do? We need to first find out what we call as sigma, the surface mass density of this hollow hemisphere. What is the surface mass density? Is the mass per unit area of the hemisphere, the total mass by the total area, which in this case will be nothing but m divided by what will be the area of a hollow hemisphere understand that it will be 2 pi r squared because we know that the total surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. This is just half a sphere, right? So, this is sigma and then we also need to find out this area, the area of this elemental ring that we have considered this particular area. Now, to find out the area of this ring, we will use the same method at, as we discussed in the previous exercise. What we are going to do here is we are going to consider the length of this whole ring which will be its circumference and multiply it with the thickness of this ring, this particular thickness. So, see that d a the small area of the ring will come out to be 2 pi into the radius of the ring which is r cos theta in this case. So, 2 pi r cos theta gives us the circumference of the ring and multiplied with that the thickness of the ring which is nothing but r d theta we have just found it. So, this becomes 2 pi r squared cos theta d theta as the area of the elemental ring. So, can we now write the small mass of this ring as the mass per unit area multiplied by the area of the ring itself which will be nothing but 
m by 2 pi r squared into 2 pi r squared cos theta d theta see that the term 2 pi r squared cancels out and we are left with m cos theta d theta right. So, this is the first exercise that we need to finish before we start with actually calculating the position of center of mass. Now, to find out the center of masses, see that the center of this ring itself is over here at the center which has an x coordinate of 0, it is lying on the y axis right. So, its x coordinate will be 0 whereas, its y coordinate is we have we just now found it is r sin theta. So, we can use these two values. So, starting with the x coordinate of the center of mass, can we say this will be nothing but by definition 1 by capital M integral of x dm which will be 1 by m integral of 0 because the x coordinate of the center of mass of this elemental ring itself is at the point 0 and this comes out to be 0 right. So, the whole hollow sphere will have its x coordinate of center of mass lying on the y axis somewhere which we understand is expected because of the symmetry of this figure. This figure lies symmetrically with respect to the y axis. So, whatever mass of the hollow sphere we have on the left side of the y axis the same amount of mass we will have on the right hand side and hence we expect the center of mass to be lying on the y axis. What about the y coordinate of center of mass now? By definition it is 1 by m integral of y dm which will be nothing but 1 by m integral of the y coordinate of this elemental ring is nothing but r sin theta its height from the point O multiplied by dm. Now, dm we have just now calculated it is nothing but m cos theta d theta. Now, see that the integrating factor here is theta. So, when we integrate this function we have to put the limits of theta. How do we put the limits of theta? see that the first ring that we shall get here we have just drawn the ring somewhere in the middle right. The first ring that we will start with will be a ring which will lie right here at the base of the hem hemisphere right. For that ring do you understand that the value of this angle theta will be nothing but 0. So, can we say the lower limit of our integration will be 0 whereas, as we keep on going up and up and up till we reach the topmost point the last ring that we will get here at the top. Do you understand that for this that ring the value of theta will increase to a value of pi by 2. So, pi by 2 then becomes the final value or the upper limit of the angle theta. So, these are the limits of integration all we need to do now is solve this integral. So, to solve it we can cancel out m and r can be taken outside inside the integral we have sin theta cos theta d theta from 0 to pi by 2. All that is left now is finding out the value of this integral. Understand that this integral is of the form integral of sin theta cos theta d theta can be solved by using the method of substitution. If we assume that let us say sin theta is equal to t, then we understand that cos theta d theta is nothing but dt, right. So, this integral can then be written as integral of sin theta is t. So, it will become t and the whole cos theta d theta is dt. So, you can write dt. So, integral of t dt which we know is nothing but the integration of that is nothing but t squared by 2 right after the integration. So, now if we substitute back the value of t from this equation we will get the value of this uh, in integral as sin squared theta by 2 that will be the value right. So, as a result we can directly substitute the value of this integral from here as sin squared theta and the limits of integration is from 0 to pi by 2 substitute the limits sin squared pi by 2 minus sin squared 0 that gives us r into uh, okay, there has to be a divided by 2 also. So, there is a divided by 2 over here which we can take out actually. So, r by 2 into 1 minus 0 that is 1 itself. So, r by 2 here is the answer that we are getting for the y coordinate of center of mass and this is the result that we are looking for. So, here in this case the center of mass of a hollow hemisphere lies right in the middle of this vertical radius that we draw here 
this is the position of center of mass at a distance of r by 2 from the base of the hemisphere.